This is a fully functional RC submarine that I built from a drinks bottle. It uses standard RC electronics and is very simple, but it took me a good few weeks of testing and failing to get to this point. I originally built it as part of a collaboration with my friend DIY Perks, who also built a submarine of his own. The challenge was this, could each of us build a remote control submarine with zero experience? Whose would be best and how would our designs differ being built in complete secrecy from one another? As my research had shown this, it's actually quite easy to get your submarine too full of air and therefore too buoyant, I decided to fill my submarine full of water. The idea was that by adjusting the amount of water in this bottle, the submarine could be neutrally buoyant. This means it sort of hovers in the water as the displacement of water and the mass of the submarine are roughly in equilibrium. As you'll see later in the video, this genius idea was um, slightly flawed actually, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that. With the maneuverability, control of the craft would mainly come from two motors that could throttle up independently. The idea with pitch and roll control was to use these Elevon type control surfaces on the rear of the submarine. So how was I going to waterproof all of the electronics on board the submarine? Brushless motors are completely waterproof, but with these large servos I followed a guide I'd seen on YouTube to make them basically impervious to water intrusion using a mix of rubber gaskets, grease, spray sealer and extra virgin olive oil. Wait, what? Yeah, so it turns out that olive oil is actually a great insulator, and if you fill up a servo with it and then seal it up, water can't compress it, as it's an incompressible medium. So water can't get in and the servo's electronics stay unfried. Okay, next, how was I going to control this submarine through radio control? Well, as normal 2.4 gigahertz RC signals can only travel through about 10 centimeters of water, I thought maybe it would be a good idea to keep the radio receiver above the water. Okay, quick overview of how this all works. Of course, we've got the submarine connected to the radio control transmitter here, um, but via all of these wires and this uh, flotation device, the battery, the main control battery is in here. The FPV transmitter here is connected via three of these wires to the camera on the top of here. Uh, this is a message to my flatmate Sam, I'm so sorry I've stolen your Tupperware box for your sandwiches and turned it into uh, something for my submarine. So with my very first submarine complete, I could head off to somewhere with lots of water to meet up with Matt, who had built a very different sort of submarine. So um, I'll start off with the power on system which is with magnets just to keep things waterproof. Wow. And uh, in inside it's for buoyancy control, it's got two um, syringes which pull the water in or push it out um, depending on how I want the buoyancy to be. Right. Now currently it's not actually fully finished because um, all these water pumps are actually going to sit in some end caps um, and they're pointed in various directions to provide the thrust and um, so it's a bit like jet propulsion um, and uh, that will hopefully uh, move it around but we have yet to find that out. <laughs> so how would these completely different approaches work in practice when we put them head to head? Well, it was my go first. Okay, chaps, we're ready for the inaugural mission of the X4 submarine. What's going to break first? Don't know, but at least we can fix it afterwards. So that's my philosophy <laughs> in general. <laughs> oh, fighter jet. Oy. Thanks RAF for the uh, fly pass, we really appreciate it. So now I've got it on the top of the water and now I'm going to see if I can dive. Oh yeah! Hey! Hey! There we go. hey. It's working! Wow! <laughs> that is awesome! Yeah. It's having a look at those uh, bits of wood. I'm going to pilot it FPV. Alright, I'm going under. Let's go. Whee! Oh. Oh, that's, that's a cool view. Oh, that's I'll, a cool I'll, view. Uh, oh, look at this. This is brilliant. I'd love to have a, a look through there. A good start, but how manoeuvrable was this thing while towing that big cable? Is it stuck? Uh, you're going into the floor. Turn to your left, if you can. It's just being held back by that wire. Try and get it out as far as you can. Throw as much cable in as you can. If it was untethered, it would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Still too nose heavy, so maybe I need to adjust the balance back at base camp. But it's a good start. Yeah. 
So yes, unfortunately, my submarine was being influenced too much by that heavy tether dragging along the riverbed, which made controlling it with precision quite difficult. Unfortunately, Matt's submarine also had a problem, but this was one that was going to have to be fixed at home, as the thing was too buoyant and needed to have lots more added mass to sink properly, using the cleverly designed syringe water pumps. Definitely go and watch Matt's video after this one to see how he got it to work really well in the end. On day two, we decided to head out to a deeper patch of water to see if the tether would be less of a hindrance to my submarine. So we are just about ready to launch. Look at that go! Great, well that's looking a lot better. I'm going to chuck the whole box in now. It was much better than the day before and I could successfully explore some of the underside of the pier. Although better, that tether was still just being a massive pain. And yeah, just making my attempts to control it precisely a little frustrating. I'm trying to get it back up to the surface now, and it's not seeming to work. I'm a bit stuck. I can just see a load of leaves. <laughs> so yeah, it seemed a little more stable, but there were still balance issues that made the thing hard to control. Friendly swan coming to add a sail At this point, I had just about finally realised why the craft was so off balance the whole time. Now, this is really obvious and um, I do feel a bit silly not having thought of this before when I was coming up with the, uh, the concept of this submarine. But yeah, it's very easy to understand why my balance was so off. Basically, when not completely full, the water within the submarine can move around and that obviously offsets the balance. So if it's pitching this way, then the water will go that way and increase the pitch and vice versa if it goes that way. So yeah, ho hopefully you get what I mean. Pretty silly, don't know why I didn't think of that before. Um, so yeah, obviously had to end up completely filling this full of water. So all of this meant that I needed to really just go home and fully rebuild the whole submarine to take into account entirely filling up that water bottle with water, which meant I would need to find some other way of adjusting the buoyancy. Now, this video isn't over yet. I've persevered and I've completely redesigned this so that it is no, in no doubt a much better submarine for future videos on this channel where I might have to use this thing. But before I show you all of this, it's time for a quick ad from the sponsor of this week's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app built off the principle of active problem solving because it takes a lot more to learn something than just watching it. To learn something, you really have to do it. Here's a course on the subject of the center of mass. If you want to build a submarine, it's very important as we've just found out. The platform is super helpful as you can learn on the go at your own pace. It's not just about memorizing or regurgitating facts. You can pick a course you're interested in and work through it. Brilliant has recently upped the interactivity on their platform to a new level, and they continue to improve their courses and add more interactivity to them. Pre-algebra, mathematical fundamentals, and algorithm fundamentals were the first courses launched on this platform, and scientific thinking was added more recently. More courses will be releasing on the platform soon, so stay tuned. If you'd like to join me and a community of over 8 million learners and educators, then make sure to head down to the description down below, click the link and uh, check it out. Or you can visit www.brilliant.org forward slash project air. So what have I done since returning from my trip to the Lake District with Matt? First off, I realized that I now hate tethers. So I set to work on designing something that didn't need a cable. Instead of having most of my electronics in a box, which required all of that cabling to such a small submarine, I decided that I would instead waterproof everything properly and mount it to the exterior of the hull. It was actually really easy. This waterproofing stuff is great and recommended by the RC master builder, Peter Shreeprel. There are links in the description to more info if you're interested. Now, how was I going to get that buoyancy just right if I had to fill the bottle completely full of water? Well, inspired by Matt's syringe pumps, I decided to use small syringes of my own that could be set with a specific volume of air and plugged so that they would keep the submarine just under the surface of the water. They could also be moved forwards and backwards to adjust the center of lift. I could then use just two motors set at an angle to pull the submarine under the water without needing movable fins. So much simpler than before. Unfortunately, the 5.8 gigahertz FPV system wasn't going to work work underwater, so I'm going to have to come back to that. The 2.4 gigahertz receiver, however, was slightly better at traveling through water, so as I didn't have a lower frequency system with a better water penetrating wavelength, I just stuck this on top of the sub where the aerial could be closer to the surface. You'll see what kind of range I get from this in a sec. So I had a very rough and ready taped together version two submarine, so let's see how much better it was. <laughs>
Uh, firstly, I can't believe how much fun this thing is now. Uh, it, it really was quite a blast to be able to just, you know, pilot it around, no restrictions, unlike the, with the tethered version before. Yes, I, I'm quite surprised at how fun submarines actually are. Now the water was a bit murky, so uh, yeah, sorry about the footage on this, and it was going dark. Looking forward to taking this to some clearer water on a sunnier day. Now, as expected, the 2.4 gigahertz receiver had a very limited range. Um, however, still worked pretty well. I mean, it had about yeah, 10 centimeters operating window, um, and that was less as you get further away because of you know, the triangulation of the waves through the water. But if I was to upgrade this in the future with a 40 gigahertz, you know, old school RC unit system thing, uh, then I'd theoretically have a lot further range. And I think that's what the RC sub people do usually um, from my research. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to get one of those for this video, but um, yes, I will be continuing to mod this thing into the future. I'm also going to look into low frequency uh, video transmission through the water. Um, so that's something to investigate. Hopefully you'll see this thing again in a future video. Uh, make sure to like this video, by the way, if you do want to see it, if you want to see a, maybe a part two or you want to see uh, just this thing appearing in yeah another project. Um, and if you've got to this point in the video and you have enjoyed it, then of course, make sure to go back and look at all my other stuff in my back catalog on my channel. Cause uh, yeah, if you've, if you've enjoyed this video, then you'll probably like the stuff that I've got on there. So um, yeah. Thank you very much to you for watching this video. Big thanks to Matt for doing this collaboration. Um, thank you to my Patreons for uh, <laughs> helping me to afford electronics and stuff for these projects. And thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video once again. Um, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.